Let's begin with a very interesting thread from Russian military bloggers about the Ukrainian artillery superiority. The genocide of the artillery of the Russian Federation continues and is gaining momentum. Red icons are affected howitzers, self-propelled guns, MLRS, elements of air defense systems and counter-battery radars of the Russian Federation. Blue are Ukrainian. These are targets hit since the beginning of the Ukrainian counteroffensive on May 9th, but most of them have been destroyed in the last month and a half. At this rate, in a month, the superiority of the armed forces of Ukraine in destroying artillery and other targets in the depths of the line of contact will be 10 times more in favor of Ukraine. Western observers are doing their work. Each icon is accompanied by photo and video proofs with geolocation. In order to actually have parity on the battlefield, they must underestimate Ukrainian losses by six to seven times. They cannot overestimate Russian ones, there are proofs for everything. I do not think that such an underestimation is possible. Even if they have pro-Ukrainian sympathies, they are still first researchers of the war and only secondarily propagandists. They don't have orders to increase the morale of the armed forces of Ukraine with outright lies, where Ukraine is losing a lot of equipment such as Bradley's. They write about it. The question is, can the general military stalemate persist with such dynamics? The Russian Federation destroys Bradley's, Leopards, and MRAPs, and Ukraine destroys self-propelled guns, howitzers, MLRS, and air defense systems. I don't think the stalemate can persist. Artillery is more important, and the Russian Federation has a weaker industry than the West. The losses of MRAPs and Bradley's will be compensated for Ukraine, but the losses of the Russian Federation in artillery will not. In order to continue to destroy the advancing IFVs, BMPs, and tanks of the armed forces of Ukraine, the Russian Federation needs defensive positions. When the Russian Federation runs out of self-propelled guns and howitzers, defensive positions will begin to be demolished with artillery. In addition, the practical range of Krasnopol is 17 kilometers, and Excalibur is 35 kilometers. Well, the leadership of the Wahhabi Confederation, ironic name for the Russian Federation used by mill bloggers to avoid naming them directly, is clearly preparing difficult decisions, just like last year. In summer, political processes and setups for preparation, in autumn, make a run for it. Preparations are clearly underway. Many units of the Russian armed forces were beheaded, Wagner was castrated, and the accusation against Colonel Kvachkov, the searches in Listva bookstore, and the arrest of Igor rallying Gherkin are clearly for a reason. It's as if the gallows know that something epic is ahead and take control of potential points of crystallization of discontent in advance. As you can see from the map, in addition to the traditionally hot Donetsk direction, two more areas are being hacked by the ZSU. Melitopol and Mariupol. If the West does not abandon Ukraine again and does not cut off the GMLRS, Excaliburs and SARS reconnoitered from satellites at a critical moment and does not clamp down on the F-16S, then, while maintaining such dynamics, one can expect breakthroughs in the front. It is only incomprehensible why Ukraine shamefully leaked so much of its equipment long before the Russian artillery was knocked out. Well, or you can believe that such a rate of knocking out artillery will not affect anything and will not create any systemic effect. Of course, the military rats in Rayadovka, large G channel, are cunningly silent about the genocide of the artillery of the Russian Federation. The more fun will be the moment of wonderful discoveries. The Ukrainian army regained control of some 30% of Klishchivka in Bakhmut with heavy fighting ongoing inside the village. Intense footage of a Russian BMP loaded with infantry being ambushed from a close distance by the Ukrainians in Klishchivka, south of Bakhmut, where the Ukrainians made some gains recently. Bad news from western Luhansk Oblast, where Russian invasion forces advanced up to six kilometers and captured three more Ukrainian villages. Advances confirmed by both Ukrainian and Russian sources. This fascist hate video is ripping through social media in Germany right now. 
allegedly quite professionally, made Russian propaganda aimed at Germans. Some also speak of an right-wing AFD party campaign mockery. Rather unlikely. I haven't been able to find an original source yet. Guten Tag. Hi, Zelensky. Schneller! Leopard! Hi, Zelensky! I'm sorry, but like some other, I don't understand this right-wing Germans which have sympathies for Russia and Russian aggressive policy towards West. First of all, after the Second World War, the greatest prize for the Germans was the decision of the Allies that country to continue to exist. They otherwise had every reason to demolish Germany as a country. Second, do this neo-fascists know how many of their grandmothers were raped by Soviet soldiers and that their grandfathers were running to surrender to the Western Allies? just not to fall in Soviet hands. And now, this stupid fools are angry at the West for something. Maybe because the West has made Germany the richest country in the world. And they love Putin and Russia, who will send them all in gulags if he have the power to do it. Servicemen of the Russian 96th Regiment recorded a confident address to Putin complaining about the lack of water and clothing supply, accusing the command of not providing the necessary rest. A few moments later, they removed the video and recorded an apology saying they are properly supplied and the outburst was due to mental fatigue. Уважаемые главнокомандующие вооруженными силами Российской Федерации, к вам обращаются мобилизованные военнослужащие 96-го полка. Все мы были призваны по мобилизации с Республики Югнуртия. Мы находимся в зоне специальной военной операции с декабря месяца. По прибытию на место дислокации командование полка и батальонов не обеспечивают нас должным образом, а именно не выполняют ваш указ о предоставлении военнослужащим отпусков не менее одного раза в полгода. Большинство военнослужащих находится 10 месяцев без отпусков. Выплаты заработной платы не менее 194 тысяч рублей не выполняются. Обеспечение водой производится один раз в месяц. Вода выдается из расчетов одна пятилитровая бутылка на человека на 10 дней. Вещевое обслуживание не выдается. Вышестоящее командование, а именно командование группировки Днепр, заставляет покупать обмунирование за свой счет. Материалы на обустройство блиндажей и окопов не поступают, либо поступают в минимальном количестве. Техникой полк не обеспечен, а именно на одну роту один Урал. Посылки от родственников либо не доходят, либо скрываются. Главу республики ввели в заблуждение по поводу отпусков и нашего обеспечения. Уважаемый Владимир Владимирович Путин, наши деды освобождали эту землю от нацизма. Многие из нас пришли по зову сердца, чтобы продолжить путь наших дедов. По отношению к командованию группировки Днепр и 96-го полка мешает выполнять долг качественно. С уважением к вам, военнослужащие 96-го полка. Данное видео было снято с моральной усталостью в зоне специальной военной операции без отпусков. Удовольствие нам доставляется в полном объеме, поэтому командованию претензий нет. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos.